and now it's time to preview an upcoming game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're walking into a kingdom that is crumbling. King Kairos has been running this kingdom, but his power is dwindling. His wife, the queen, has left him, abandoned him, and now she's running a group full of rebels trying to overthrow him. And to make it worse, their daughter, the princess? Well, she's gotten involved with the church, who's also trying to overthrow both of them. You've got three different factions fighting for power. Today, we're looking at a card drafting game called Shadow Throne from Nothing Sacred Games, the same guys that brought you Corporate America, one of my favorite negotiation games. So it's a, you know, drafting card game, fighting with three factions, and uh, it's on Kickstarter right now. It's for three to five players, plays in 30 or 45 minutes. So let's take a look and see, will the church overthrow everybody in the princess? Or will it be the king or the rebels with the queen? Let's take a look. This is a Kickstarter preview and all the components you see are not final. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more artwork and they're gonna, components gonna look different in the final version. In Shadow Throne, you're gonna be playing over a number of different battles. And each of those battles are gonna happen between one of three factions, the Empire, the Church, and the Rebels. Those battles are make, made up of waves. But before we get there, let's show you the factions and how the game's played. The game has three phases. At the beginning of the game, everyone's gonna get six cards and three gold. These cards are kept secret so no one else can see them. And what you're gonna do is, as you can see, there's three different factions. We have the red cards, which is the Empire, the blue, which is the Rebels, and the yellow, which are the Church. And so we have six cards to choose from, and it's gonna be a drafting in this phase. So what we'll do is we'll pick one card to keep from all of these. Let's say we keep this one. We will pass all the rest of these to the next player. And then of course I will get those the, the players to the rights cards. And then I will pick one card and continue drafting this way until I end up with six cards. But let's look at what these cards mean. So here we have someone from the Empire. This is actually King Kairos. And so we have different things here. It tells me what type of rank he is. And he is a noble written there in the red. Also signified by the three dots there. This is how much power he has. Zero. This means in a battle, he contributes zero power towards this faction. Five is influence. If the this faction ends up winning the battle, this is how much influence you're going to win. Influence is points in the game, and the first one to 15 wins. Here is how much the card costs to basically influence the person and put them out there in a battle. This is going to be five. You're going to have to pay five coins to play him. Now notice that it says minus five. Some cards actually give you gold. This one is plus two gold. Some of them you pay, some of them are zero. And some of them actually have these special abilities. They're ranked in numbers from like one, two, and three and such. The one stars would, would uh, resolve first, then the twos and the threes. In this case, this one says you can play uh, another character of the faction of your hand. So we're not playing any of these yet. Actually, we're just gonna grab all these cards and we're gonna continue to draft until we have six cards. So after the intrigue phase that I have my six cards, again, these would be secret in my hand. We go on to the wave phase, which essentially is gonna be four waves of a battle. And so on the wave, I get to select any one of these cards and play it face down. So of course I've got two from the church, two from the empire, and two from the rebels, it just worked out that way. And we'll, we would play a card face down. Once they're all down, we have four players there. Everybody would flip these over and we would start to resolve these. The first thing they would do is pay the cost of the card. In this case, I would not have to pay anything because this is zero. Once everyone's done that, people would start to activate the abilities. Um, here, this ability, there's, if there was a one or a two star anywhere, those would activate first, but there weren't. This one says convert all commoners of, of other factions in this wave to the church faction. So if there's any other commoners, like this one, someone played a rebel card that was a commoner, this person would actually be converted to the church. So this person is now uh, part of the church faction. That would be the end of this wave, but first we have to count up the power. So we look at the factions, and yellow has zero, one, and zero. So yellow is going to go up one, but this one was turned to yellow. So this would have been a one for the blue rebels, but it's actually a one for the yellow. So we have one and two for yellow and nothing for anybody else. So after the first wave of this battle, yellow would be at two. Now it would be the second wave. Everybody would lay down their cards next to, just to the right, of the card they played in the first wave. And once everyone has selected a card, all those would get flipped up. And this is actually is the second wave of this battle. There's a total of four waves in each battle. And then we would pay for and resolve all those cards. For example, this card here would kill all commoners of other factions in this wave. And in this wave, there are actually two commoners that were from the rebel faction. So both of those would be killed 
it would not uh, amount to anything. And then we would, again, resolve from that wave how many power each of the living people have. So in this case, at the end of the second wave, uh, the empire is at three and the church is at two. You would play two more waves just like that. So every battle has four waves where every, every player is going to play four cards by the end of the time, one at a time like we've been doing. And then at the end of the battle, let's say it ended up like, like this. Uh, at the end of the four waves of that battle, whoever has the most sort of power here uh, would win. And let's take a look at that. Also, if a two factions are tied, they both win. So let's say the, um, the, the, the church won there. Now, if these were the four waves, the four cards from uh, all the four waves that I had placed, I have two of them that were from the church who was the winning faction. I would look at the influence number on both of those cards, which is three, and I would get three influence. These essentially are points. And then you continue playing this the way that I just showed you, all the way until someone has 15 influence, and then the one who has the most at the end of that is the winner. One last thing is any faction that did not win, that has the little flag with coins, you'll get consolation gold. So I would re actually receive three gold because this was my card, and this faction didn't win. Now he has consolation gold, but I don't get those because this faction won. So you can uh, play some cards that maybe cost nothing, uh, and they might help you if you lose and doing that, and it's a constant struggle between getting gold, having enough to pay for characters, uh, and getting influence points. Because uh, many of the, some of the characters, like this one, uh, actually cost five coins, so it's very expensive, but he'd give you five influence. If I had had this guy out, I would have had five more influence, which is just a third of the points you need to win. So again, you play through the intrigue drafting phase, the wave fighting phase, and that final conflict phase to see who gets the most influence. And since we were dealt six cards to begin the game, if you remember, we played four phases. We'll have two left over at the end of the round. Uh, and then we would simply discard any one of these and then keep one for the next round. Now, this special card that we kept will not get drafted. So next round, we'll actually end up having seven cards because you get dealt six at the beginning of each round. And then at the, end of the, and at the end of each round, you always keep one card and then you'll discard the rest after you've played all four waves. The one who gets the 15 first wins. And then we see who has the most at the end of that. Well, there's Shadow Throne. As you can tell, uh, it, drafting is very popular these days. And this is the main mechanism of this game. So if you enjoy drafting and trying to see all the cards that are going around and maybe trying to possibly think about what cards the other players might be having, what they might play, and how to play around those and the timing of each of those, obviously, because some of them can only can do certain special things in certain waves. Uh, and trying that, that, that constant struggle between money and an and influence and it's constant up and down and up and down and if, if this seems interesting to you i'm sure the people at nothing sacred games would love your support it's on kickstarter right now so just below me in just a moment there's going to be a link that you can go to that'll show you the kickstarter page and if you're interested i'm sure nothing sacred games would love your support thanks for watching our review today for more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.